to get rid of the presence of the people who populate that bureaucracy. But in order to do that, you need this industrial logic. And that industrial logic, in my opinion, is what the Supreme Court has already given us, which is this mandate to say the executive branch, the fake executive branch, the administrative state, has written all these rules by fiat. Most of them are illegal, like they're actually unlawful. They're illegitimate. And so if you have an executive branch that says, okay, we're going to recognize that most of these regulations are illegitimate, there's your blueprint for then shaving down the size of the federal bureaucracy, which is then the permanent solution to stop that bureaucracy from perpetuating this kind of illegal rampant action. And I think that's the stuff of how you actually save a country, boring as that might sound. It's not boring. And I think um, I, I've never heard in all the, you know, my whole life in Washington, anybody suggest that this is a process that could really be stalled or reversed, the process being the growth of the federal government, mm-hmm. which is just inexorable because mm-hmm. the purpose of the institution is to protect protect itself and expand. That's the it's whole, like a law of physics that's that's applied it. to this it. government. Every yeah. institution exists to protect itself for its own benefit. That's its purpose. And it's demonstrable in its behavior. So, um, but I, it's it's so obvious, it's so overwhelming. It's the largest institution in human history. I've never heard anybody say, you know, we have a shot of like lopping off 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%. 80%, like never, yeah. That I mean, that would change everything from our yeah. foreign policy to our economy, to our culture. Um, you really think that's that could happen? Yeah, I think it could happen. The fact that these senators declined to come onto your show and Rick Scott was the only one here making the case to the American people, I think just goes to show that these people are going to indeed continue Mitch McConnell's uh, direction and leadership for the Senate, which is simply unacceptable. We need strong leadership that won't repeat 2016 and block President Trump's agenda. That's why I've publicly come out to endorse Senator Scott. But remember, the American people can make their voices heard. The senators answer to you. So phone your senator and let them know that you don't want the same Mitch McConnell leadership. We don't want the the revenge of the Sith Lord here in the Senate. And I think that Rick Scott has a chance at winning this thing. What's going on, everyone? Uh, I wanted to highlight, you know, Donald Trump's a threat to bureaucracy, right? We all know this. You saw from the intro, uh, Vivek outlined something that I've been echoing a lot on my channel as how an institution has a conflict of interest to justify its own existence in the government, right? I said this about the Department of Education, the Federal Reserve. These people, even though if you look at the metrics, they make things worse. I also, from a principled standpoint, don't believe that uh, people like uh, like unelected bureaucrats, like in the Federal Reserve, should have so much sway and power to affect our lives, essentially. And as you probably already guessed, there's like a war kind of going on right now with the you know GOP. And it's something that has been waged war over and over again. I mean, this happened 2016, where Trump had a bunch of people undermining his administration, like Nikki Haley, not Nikki Haley, but Mike Pompeo, these types that talk negatively about Donald Trump. And Mitch McConnell seems to be doing like this, like what, like almost like House of Cards, political, trying to secure his legacies, trying to secure his power, like the same way that Nancy Pelosi did, right, by... um By pushing for Hakeem Jeffries as her successor, she has, like, behind closed doors power over the party, even though, you know, her agenda, whatever. She don't have time. She don't don't have long in this world. But I say all that to say that this is what, as a conservative populist, this is what I hate. This is what I cannot stand. This is why I am for term limits. And Rick Scott, I'm from Florida, so I could be biased, but I think he is the best choice available as of right now. Rick Scott is not a perfect uh, candidate. I understand people have red flag concerns, like his his support of red flag laws back in the day when Florida was much more of a swing state. I understand all the concerns, but I always want to tell my audience this, and I always tell people this, especially when I talk about politics, is that it's about trade-offs. No one's going to get a perfect 100 for anybody. All I ask is, hey, who has the better trade-off to get you closer to what you want? Think of changing the government in a step-by-step uh, process, not an all-in-one process. That's not going to happen. Zooming out, why have a secret vote? If you, if you want to vote for somebody, I, like I'll tell everybody why I voted for Trump, and I've been doing it for four years. So I'm happy to explain why uh, your father-in-law is the person that I cast my ballot for. 
This is what I do professionally. And I'm sure that every person watching right now could easily rattle off why they voted for Donald Trump. Something actually quite profound because nobody could explain why they voted for Kamala. <laughs> it's Touché. so fun to ask me, why are you voting for Kamala? No one could ever say. But um, I, I guess at the very least stand up, right, for your vote. And I don't, I don't understand the secret ballot thing in the Senate. I don't get it. Yeah, no, that's that's concerning to a lot of people. You you should own it. Whatever it is, you should own it. And you yes. should be able to explain yourself to your point as to why you thought that that was the best person. Um, it, it would probably go a long way for the American people to have a little more transparency. That's all we want, by the way. With Donald Trump, with whoever it is, we want our leaders to be transparent. We want you to tell us the truth and we want you to tell us what you're doing behind the scenes on our behalf because we sent you there as our representatives. So we should know how it is that they're voting. I agree with you. I think that would be a very nice thing to see implemented. So I would second that motion. Thank you for considering that. New statement from Rick Scott issuing on the Senate minority leader, majority leaders for too long. The Washington establishment has spent our money uh, our country doesn't have and added trillions to our national debt. It makes me sick to think that we could pass this problem on to our grandkids. I'm ready to rein in our reckless government spending in Washington, just like I did as Florida governor. I'm biased. Uh, I'm from Florida, born and raised in Florida. Rick Scott is heavily loved here in Florida. So I grew up with this man being governor. So I was a kid. Yes, please, Trump, fire all their asses. Anyone that's making it hard on the president to carry out his agenda should be fired. Nobody gave Joe Biden and Kamala Harris any kickback throughout their term. Trump deserves the same loyalty and respect. I say I, this is how many Americans are seeing it. And the fact that the mainstream media is trying to spin it to say that, oh, this is a bad thing. It's bad for a president to have people who are loyal to his agenda, and that's going to fall through with the agenda that he outlined, the, the agenda and vision that he pitched to the American people, and the American people gave him the popular vote. No, 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 no. We we can't let him have loyalists in his party. Make it make sense, government. Y'all wasn't talking like this for Joe Biden. This is the hypocrisy. This is why many people see the, the, the mainstream media as just another arm of the Democratic Party. You're the Democratic's marketing arm. And it's why when, when the deportation happens, I don't care what none, none of these people says. Because in the back of my mind, I said, this has to be done. This has to be done. I digress. Let's listen in on, uh, on this clip. There is a feeling of dread among everyone. CNN's Renee Marsh is with us now. Renee, what are you hearing? Well, John, we are in a new dystopian hellscape. That is from a federal employee via text message last night. And that is the mindset of many of the two million federal workers anticipating Donald Trump's return to office. Now, to be clear, what Donald Trump is promising for federal workers is unlike anything we have seen in our lifetime. He's proposing reverting to a structure of government that existed 141 years ago when political parties gave government jobs to their supporters. And that's what has federal workers who I'm speaking to so anxious and so scared about Trump's plan known as Schedule F. Now, it would give him the power to Schedule start fire. these mass firings of nonpartisan career employees perceived as disloyal. Nonpartisan? Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? I bet you if we audit them like we're supposed to be able to and we see their donations, who they donate to, I bet you 80% of them donated to the Democratic Party. So I don't know too, too much about this bipartisan stuff that, you know, this person wants to claim on CNN. See, and this, uh, this is the perspective I take with CNN now. I don't take CNN as some credible source of information, facts, and news. I just take them as, okay, this is a platform that express a certain opinion, just like my channel is a platform that express a certain opinion. This is how, if you, if you see news the same way that I just articulated here, you have no problem sifting through the BS. But I digress. Let's, let's listen. Who may get in the way of his policy actions at these agencies. As you know, Trump has obsessed on the campaign trail about the idea of federal workers being agents of the deep state working against him and his agenda. Now, some of the, the American people's agenda. He won the popular vote. The majority of people in this country who voted wanted Trump's agenda. So it's not only just Trump's agenda. It's America's agenda now. And you're getting in the way. And this is what I'm talking about. This is the establishment. It goes back to the point I started off in the beginning of this video. These people are only looking out to protect their own interest. Right? John Bolton, right? He finished arguing with Vivek. I remember, I remember fondly about, oh, we need the foreign wars. We need to be interventionists, all this stuff. Now, oh, how convenient. 
He did not actually hear Donald Trump say anything about calling uh, military members suckers and losers. But the mainstream media, this is what they were peddling the entire time. They were peddling, oh my God, he said, Trump insulted veterans. When, when in reality, all it was was he said, she said. Make it make sense. Anonymous sources. You're, using, you're referencing anonymous sources for your information and then you're running like it's a fact. This is my problem with the left. But they're going to sit there and when you say, oh, yeah, the media lies, they're going to say, what lies? What lies have we said? When you said Donald Trump insulted people, oh, no, but a, a, a Trump official said that. That's facts. It's not facts. Someone making an uh, unclaim without evidence is not a fact. It's not false or true either because there's no evidence to really check if that is actually real in reality. And in the court of law, that would have not passed. That wouldn't have passed as evidence. Especially if the person has a motive to go against the person that they're slandering. There's nothing more enraging than our own elected officials telling us we are wrong to support someone who is in line with the president-elect who just voted, who just won the popular vote in over 300 electoral votes. Politico, there is now internal backlash building against the conservatives vocally supporting Rick Scott for Senate Majority Leader. See, this one thing I, I pointed out, um, I think I made an RFK video or something about how tribalism like mega is a rejection of tribal politics like i'm not going to support you just because you you have an r next to your name i should not support you just because you have a d next to your name and i remember uh reacting to some i guess he's like some establishment republican guy and he's bashing trump he said oh my god you got all these former democrats having influence in trump's administration this is not republic this is not good for the republican party and i said correct the mega movement is not uh, good for the Republican Party, but it's good for America. I think he's right. going to do Just for example, two days ago, he this. called for investigations yeah, into anyone spreading this. rumors. I think he's going to secure the border. I think he's going to get rid of this crazy inflation that's hurting middle class and working class families, hurting our economy. I think he's going to get back to common sense energy policy. I think he's going to focus on protecting the First Amendment. I mean, th think about this. Did you ever think you would see Donald Trump, Elon Musk, RFK Jr., and Tulsi Gabbard on the same team? They are on the same team because people because of the attack on free speech the attack on the first amendment he's going to focus on those things yeah. that the american people elected him to do and i had a bunch of centrist woman says she used to be a liberal democrat she said this is why she's voting for trump because rfk endorsed him right it's america first not republican first not democrat first american first and it's a movement that's more centrist compared to whatever kamala harris was offering us kamala harris was offering a solution where these people see you as, oh, you shouldn't be able to tell us what to do. We're your leaders. Wrong. You're not our leaders. You are, you are our representatives. So start acting like it. Hey, we want this agenda. Represent that agenda. Done. There's no arguing here. You shouldn't be mad about being bullied by your constituency. This is how the establishment talk. There is now internal backlash building against the conservatives vocally supporting Rick Scott to, for Senate Majority Leader. The bulk of the Republican rank and file is not pleased at all. We spoke with one senator who was aghast at the efforts, as well as a, a GOP aide who said that the campaign is pissing off senators who votes, who votes Rick needs to win. Senators do not take kindly to having an army of social media trolls attack them. I'm not a social media troll. I'm just an American voter that happens to have a small audience, small following online. That's it. The most conclusive mandate in 40 years. What the hell is our U.S. Senate doing? If you don't see this nothing more than political, hey, look, I got a bridge to sell you. Mike Pence populism. Mike Pence take on populism. Former Vice President Mike Pence took aim at his former boss calling for the Republican Party to abandon populism in favor of good old-fashioned conservatism. I'm showing you good old-fashioned conservatism. Not the burger, guys. The burgers are good. This is good old-fashioned conservatism right here. Mitch McConnell right here in the middle. I don't know who these two are. Actually, I think, I, I think the, these are the people that are uh, part of McConnell's camp. This is good old-fashioned conservatism. I joke around like when like, you know, people are saying, Kenny, you're not really a conservative. I say, yeah, you might be right. I'm a new blood conservative. And new blood conservatives, we're populist. We're like, yo, by the people, for the people, of the people. And if whatever the people want, we, are, we believe our elected officials' job is to deliver what the American people want. Not what they think is best for the populace. No, 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 no. Vegas is like, 
It seemed like they lost sense of that. You are you are our representative. You're not our leader. The only leader we have is in the executive office, and his name is President Trump. Joe Biden currently. That's technically the only leader in America. Everyone else, you are a representative. You're supposed to represent the interests of the American people. Because the, Amer- the, the president has to pitch himself and say, hey, this is why I should lead the country. Because he has he outlines the vision. This is why he anoints people. This is why he's commander-in-chief. Last time I checked, senators are not commander-in-chief. So there's only one leader in government that the American people is technically is to our leader. Is that the president? Everyone else, you're a representative. At least that's how I see the government. And the idea that these people, these senators, sit here and feel entitled to a position of power is the same thing that happened with uh, Kevin McCarthy. He felt entitled to the House speakership and people were like, nah, we think you're, we don't trust you no more, right? You, you, you doing these uh, double-sided deals, you, you backstabbing people, you're not following through with your word, you're doing half promises, you, you keeping half promises. We, we, we done. I think you, you, we don't, we can't trust you as a representative of the Republican Party in the House anymore. We got, uh, what's his name? Mike Johnson. People still complain about Mike Johnson, but no one's calling for him to lose his job. We're just saying, look, yeah, you're stuck in the same position as uh, Kevin McCarthy, but we trust you. We think you're more sincere than Kevin McCarthy. And that was the problem. But all these politics had these, these, they didn't understand it. And now the same thing is happening in the Senate majority race. But we'll, 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 see, what's hap- we'll, we'll see how the development goes. But I'm glad Nikki Haley has no place in the administration. I'm glad Mike Pompeo has no place in the administration. Because Nikki Haley has been like slowly like undermining... Like, Never Nikki? Y'all thought Never Nikki was for president? No, Never Nikki was also for Trump's administration. We don't want you nowhere near there because we see you as a war hawk. We see you as someone who's ideologically different from America first. And this is what the American people wanted. This is what voters like me voted for. Hey, we want an American first coalition. We want an American first administration. If you're not aligned with American first, we don't want you. Rick Scott. He's the closest there, the closest option we have to MAGA. You put him in. He already promised that he's gonna he agrees with Trump with term limits. He's gonna do all that stuff. All that stuff that the American people said, yes, we want it. But these establishment political people said, no, we don't want that. Of course you don't want that. Because it goes back to the intro of this video. The only the interest of the institution is to justify its own existence. And that's how I'll end off the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think about this conflict that's uh, turning in the GOP? Also, I want to put in a fun fact. Apparently, Vivek Ramaswamy is a dark horse to be considered Secretary of State. Do you think he's up for the job? I, I Honestly, I think he is. Look at the intro. He articulated it perfectly, and you need someone like that, especially when apparently they're supposed to be helping you when you talk to foreign nations as Secretary of State, if I remember correctly. Vivek fits that bill perfectly. He's ideologically aligned with Donald Trump. These are the kind of people we want Trump's administration to be filled with. But I digress with my question. I'd like to hear your answers in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, uh, and subscribe once again. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.